The, the emphasis of this uh, visit is we're here to talk about how to use the time that you still have left in college. Um, I know most of you just, I, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Georgia McBride, and most of you know me, I think, but I'm the career coach for the College of Music and Fine Arts. So um, a common situation that I run into on a regular basis is seniors or people who have already graduated saying, I can't find a job because I don't have any experience. <coughs> How am I supposed to get experience if no one will hire me without experience? Um, I don't know what I want to do yet because I haven't had enough experience to know what I want to do. So what we're here to do today is try to avoid some of those issues after graduation um, and help you all use your time while you're still in school to gain experience so that you are more marketable afterwards no matter what you want to do whether it's performance or you know behind the scenes administration or whether you want to go on to graduate school. Um, are you a graduate student? No. Okay, undergrad. Um, what are the class ranges of students, real quick, just so we, we know who we're talking to? Any freshmen? A lot of freshmen. Okay. Sophomores? Juniors? Seniors? Okay. All right. We're going to have to hurry with you all. <laughs> but um, I'll just start out by asking Allison um, to just tell us a little bit about your history and how you wound up where you are now. Okay. Sure. Um, well, as Georgia said, I am from Lafayette, Louisiana, and uh, my journey to New Orleans just began on Google because as a senior project and something that's always been in the back of my mind, I wanted to open up my own musical theater studio years down the line. And I was Googling names that I had come up with myself to see if they already existed, and I came across Broadway South um, and realized it was here in New Orleans, and it was a, uh, it's basically a legislation that was passed in 2007 to admit uh, live performance to get tax breaks in Louisiana. So I did not end up working for Broadway South for a number of reasons, but I did end up in the city and I've performed um, professionally for the last two years. And now I'm working on a pre-Broadway tour called Soul Doctor. I'm actually uh, an assistant company manager, so I've worked both on stage and off stage um, with uh, a number of shows, and that's what I've been doing um, since graduation. Wedding, did anybody see the wedding singer at Lipetite? Here he comes. Shame you on you. Go to Lipetite shows. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the American Can Company, that, um, or, I'm sorry, that. Um, oh, uh, World War II Museum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worked at the Stage World War II Museum King. for about uh, nine months with the. Uh, I, we, originated the show Let Freedom Swing. There's a new cast in, some, some old, some new, in Let Freedom Swing now. But uh, I used to be Lorna Baker, one of the Baker sisters. And, um, and then I, I was in The Wedding Singer, I performed at Tulane, and now I'm assistant company managing. And I'm also a grad student at UNO in arts administration. So I'm learning how to grant write, and I'm learning production on the for-profit and not-for-profit sides. So, with that said, I think uh, the main reason that I'm here is to talk to you about um, Springboard has, it, it's a, it's a self-explaining uh, title because it literally is set up to launch you into the world of performance. Um, the American Theatre Wing does a really good job uh, at picking 35 people from across the country and bringing them together in New York City for a two-week hell-raising conference of theater. It's, it's incredible. Um, I went in 2008, and uh, there were nine shows scheduled for us to see. There were many, many classes with many wonderful people, both behind the scenes and on stage. And um, we just, we would have, we would have 16-hour days of classes and shows and talkbacks with some famous people, some not famous people, some people who were famous in the theater world in New York, but I had never heard of, and it was really cool to hear what those people are doing with their lives and the advice that they have to give um, someone like me who was thinking, do I move to New York or do I not move to New York? What, what do I do? Um, 
with, uh, with that like little intro, uh, Patrick said that y'all would enjoy some name dropping. So <laughs> I'll, I'll get into that uh, with uh, just saying that one of my classes, one of my favorites that I met was with Neil Patrick Harris. And he came and talked to us about his life as an actor and how he's just like everybody else. And he always wonders when his next job is going to be. Um, he said after Doogie, he had a really hard time. He had a hard couple years. And then um, he's had some personal issues that have, you know, just held him back a little bit. And, but uh, look at him now. I mean, he's, he's great. He's always going to make a comeback. Um, some other people that we met were Anika Nani Rose, who, um, at that time was on Broadway in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Um, since then, you may know that she's been the voice of the princess and the princess and the frog. Uh, she was really cool. Um, another person I met was that, you know that weird guy from Lost with the big blue eyes? His name's <laughs> Michael Emerson. He's not too famous, yeah. but he's really weird. And he, and he was really weird in person. He came and talked to us about uh, just his, just his, his career and how he stumbled into acting and, and how he's in Lost. We got a really cool backstage tour of Mary Poppins when it had just opened on Broadway. Um, like I said, there were nine shows scheduled for us to see. I, I brought some of my playbills. I ended up seeing 14 shows while I was there because I went to some extras on my breaks. Um, this was an off-Broadway production. It was The Adding Machine, and it's not there anymore, and it shouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> Top Girls starred Martha Plimpton, who we also had a class with and a talk back with. She was a star of Goonies when she was little. Oh she told us a story about her parents meeting in the first production of Hair. And so she was like a Broadway love child, and her dad ran off to California, but her mom stayed in New York and did theater for the rest of her life. And so she literally grew up in the seats of Broadway shows. That was like her babysitter, she said, was the theater, because she couldn't get in, into trouble there. She's the one um, that comes on after Glee. The one with the raising hope. Raising hope. Yeah. yeah. She's the mother. Yeah. 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 She's, she's amazing. Um, and also Marissa Tomei was in this, and <laughs> she came out in her caftan and talked to us for an hour, and she was really cool. Boeing Boeing was one of my favorites. It wasn't a musical, it was a play, and I'm, a, I'm very much, I would much rather watch a musical, but this was a really cool show. It had Bradley, what's his last name? Starts with a W, he's got the big forehead. Whitfield. Whitfield, Whitfield. exactly. He was the bad guy in um, Billy Madison. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah. <laughs> He was the, the main guy, and Christine Baranski was his crazy maid, and they stayed and talked back to us. He was a jerk. She was awesome. <laughs> um, we saw Young Frankenstein. I, I saw this one on my own with uh, one of my friends, Matt. Matt and I both made it into Springboard together from UL Lafayette. Uh, we went up to Springboard together, so we were two out of the 35, and we were really good buds. So it's possible that you could be paired with a, a buddy. And um, let's see, Sutton Foster and... Uh, and uh, Karen, Karen. Moreland Grace. Um, Megan thank you. I love her. Patty Lapone and Gypsy. I saw Laura Lenny and uh, Lily Liaison Dangereux. And August Osage oh. County was incredible. It was, was one of the. Sh uh, the um, what? Was it the original cast? Yeah, yeah, this is the original I cast. Saw with, I, saw, I also saw it with Felicia Rashad. Oh my God. Played. It was amazing. <laughs> oh my God. It was the most. Because Felicia Rashad, Claire Huxtable. You know, from the show. She was and the Indian girl? No, she was the mother. No. Yes. No way. Yes, exactly. So I'm thinking, and I'm like, you know, it's Claire Huxtable. Okay, whatever. You know, but I went, it was the most amazing transformation I've ever seen of an actress in my well, life. Well, this woman was, yes, that yes. did it, the original, mm -hmm. she was like from Kentucky or something, yeah. and she came up there, and it was the most incredible acting performance I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and I don't know her name. Show. I wish I did, but I, I knew it then. But, um, <laughs> no. I just kept laughing because you kept looking, thinking about people's names. I'm like, I'm like it's in the book. It's I'll like book. open it up. Yeah. How do you find it? I don't know. <laughs> um, so and Crybaby, uh, horrible. It was just horrible. Yeah, it was one. atrocious. Um, Violet Weston, man, she was good. Yeah. God. Okay. So anyway, that's just a little idea of uh, of what you're exposed to in those two weeks. It was a crash course. And um, other classes that we took were like real estate classes and managing your own business because you are your business. You have to sell yourself as an actor. So you learn how to do some management with, your, with yourself. And if you start thinking of yourself as your own business, it becomes a little more clear how successful actors are successful. Because a lot of times like we're just kids and we want to be in a play and we go to an audition and 
there's a there's a structure to it. There's an actual like formula and a method um, to all this madness. But it's still madness. Sorry, the brochure says that you get to go to the Tony rehearsal. You do. Is that true? Yes. I've gone the last three years, and it's really fun. Yes, we got yelled at by Patty. Yeah. She. Um, can I tell you a little story? Fun. Okay. So we're at the Tony Award rehearsal, and um, Patty Lapone, who's been performing forever, made it very clear that she misses the days when the orchestra was in the pit. Well, we were in the pit because we were basically some of the only people at this rehearsal, and they put all 35 of us in rows of chairs right there. And it was basically like we had two thrust stage on, on either side of us, and we had everything right in front of us. And um, she came out on stage, and she messed up. And she blamed it on the stage manager, and the stage manager came out, and he apologized, and she was like, I can't hear a thing. It, and where's the orchestra? I can't even see the orchestra. The monitors aren't on. Why isn't the orchestra in the pit? These kids are in the pit. And she was just so mad that we were there, but we weren't mad. We were just like, <laughs> and just, have a yeah, we did. <laughs> and just to clarify, in case anybody doesn't know, the American Theater Wing, which puts on Springboard NYC, is the parent organization that hosts the Tony, the Tony Award. Awards. And that's the connection so that's there, the and that's relation. why you get to go to the Tony Award um, rehearsal. Uh, so I know I'm missing someone really cool. Oh, Susan Meisner. She was. Um, Either Pop Six, Squish, Uh Oh, Cicero, or Lipsch. <laughs> she was one of those six girls in, in Chicago, um, the movie. And she's a Broadway choreographer, and she came and taught us a choreography class. Also got to take workshops um, from Seth Rudetsky. Do you all know Seth Chatterbox online? Uh, anybody? I've posted his stuff. You all need to go and look at his YouTube stuff. He is incredible. He constructs. He's about this tall, yeah. Jewish man, and he wore like cut off shirt and like basketball shorts to our workshops. It was just like so just a whirlwind of like a little man. He has played for like oh, everything. every major show on Broadway. He's been the musical director for that. Wow. And he is incredible. And he has um, a show at Don't Tell Mamas, which is a bar theater thing. And, um, we got to go to that after we took his class. We went to that um, the, the next night. And so he already knew us, and he, sh he gave us a shout out. And at his show, he always invites a Broadway star or like even somebody from the course just to come and have a, a talk. Um, and it's like 35 bucks to get in, and we got in for free because we were part of Springboard. And it's just like you get all these perks. Um, and, and, and another one of my favorites was Kathleen Marshall, Rob Marshall's sister. She had just directed Grease on Broadway, and she came and taught us a musical theater class, too. So you wow. get to learn from really cool people. Um, what, where else well, can we go Well, I just want to just tie into y'all. The whole reason why we're having Allison talk about Springboard is it, it actually does happen after you graduate. That's when you would have... You can you, go between your junior and senior year or, or the summer after, after you graduate. After your senior year. Um, and so, for those of you that aren't at that point yet, the reason why we're wanting, why I wanted to expose you, and Patrick wanted to expose you to someone like Allison, is so that you can start planning for this and know that this is an option and start preparing now. Um, in a minute, I'll have Allison tell us about her preparation story and her educational background. Um, before we go into that, just to let you all know, they also do have um, a behind-the-scenes program called the Theater Intern Group. Um, that's for those of you who may want to work behind the scenes in musical theater or on Broadway. Um, basically, what you do is, and I can help you with this, um, you find an internship in New York, and then what, so it's not your actual internship. You find another opportunity, and um, some of us, you know, who care about your careers have been working to identify several places in New York where you can intern, and then you also apply to be a part of the theater intern group which is a supplemental program, um, basically to give you some community while you're there. So say you're interning for like the Manhattan Theater Club or something, um, you might just be interning in their box office. And so you're not going to really be exposed to that much. While it's a great opportunity and you'll meet great people there, you're still going to be in that little bubble the whole time. So this is to help you get out of that bubble, meet people that are interning at other companies and network with them, learn from their experiences, hear what else they're learning in their internships, and also link you up with the American Theater Wing. So it's, it's another really great program to start planning for, and you can do that um, the summer after your, 
se uh, junior year or senior year as well. So another thing to think about. But um, going back to Springboard, let's have Allison, if you want to tell us about your educational background and how you got into it. Sure. Um, well, I knew I liked to sing and dance. That was my big thing growing up. And when I, when I was about to go into college, I got a phone call from someone who worked at the university, UL Lafayette, who, uh, his name's Sean Roy. He was my vocal coach junior and senior year of high school. And he said, come audition for Les Miserables. We're doing a student production, and we, we need a, a Cosette. And I said, well, I'm going to Girl State. I'm going to be a counselor. I can't do that. He's like, no, you're coming. At least come audition. It, it won't hurt. So I go to audition, and they ended up casting as Eponine. And then they talked me out of going to LSU into UL Lafayette's theater program. And I said, well, I want to teach. And they're like, well, you can always teach with a BFA. You can, you can go on and get your master's or whatever. And I went through this whole rigmarole about what I want to do with my life, of course, as we all do. And um, it ended up, they, they gave me a little job. And I got to stay at home. So it was just more affordable than going to LSU. And I was really glad that I did because the way it worked out was Sean Roy, who worked in the opera department, who I had already studied with in high school, kept me on as a vocal student, but then I didn't have to pay, and I got credit <laughs> for that. And um, I started taking a bunch of acting classes. I've never acted before in my life before, uh, before I went to college. And um, I just kept getting cast in musicals, and I knew that it put everything that I loved together in one place on a stage, and what could be better than that? And so um, I just, I did, dug really deep into all the opportunities that I could have. I ended up doing a couple of community theater shows in the area, in the Lafayette area. And then when, uh, I guess when the fall of 2007 rolled around, I was projected to graduate in 2008. My friend Matt, who was a dance major, we had done a lot of shows together though, came to me and said, there's this really cool program called Springboard NYC. I auditioned, we gotta make you a tape. And I'm like, okay, you know, kind of blew it off for a little while. And then he got accepted. And he said, Allison, you've got to do this. I can't go to New York by myself. You have to make a tape. And I'm like, they only pick 35 out of the whole country. They're not going to pick two from the same school. And he's like, they do. I know they do. They're going to pick you. <laughs> so we made a tape in his bedroom. <laughs> and he was like recording me singing. And it was a very last minute tape. And I don't recommend you doing that. But I still got in with that. So it's right. not like you have to go above and beyond with this tape. You can really make a home video and send it in. I'm sure the better your tape, the better your chances. So <laughs> make it as great as you possibly can. But um, you just do what you do best. There's two sections to springboard. You can sing and do a monologue on your tape, or you can do two contrasting monologues. I, th I think that's how it works. Um, the rules may have changed. but. If you want to just go for straight theater, you can. They split the 35 in basically in half, bless you. And, uh, and some, sometimes you're all together in classes, but other times when there's just a musical theater class, there'll be like 17 of you in that musical theater class rather than all 35. So you get a little bit more one-on-one um, -on -one and intimate time. So that was like my, my journey mm -hmm. and, and how I got into springboard. And maybe talk a little bit about how that helped you, you know, decide what you wanted to do going forward. Okay. Um, my two weeks in New York taught me that I did not want to be in New York. I, <laughs> I didn't want to take the subway every day. And I wanted to be able to go where I wanted, when I wanted. And I'm Southern through and through. And I came back because this is, this is where I enjoy life. Um, and I knew I didn't want to stay in Lafayette, so I started auditioning for... Tuts in Houston, um, and then I also went to Disney, and uh, the Tuts thing didn't work out at all. Disney put me in a waiting pool where I was supposed to call every Monday to see if I got a contract. Because when you go to auditions, sometimes if they need a Cinderella that day, they'll just contract you. But if they like you, but they don't need a Cinderella that day, they'll be like, okay, call us every Monday, and that's your responsibility. Well, two weeks later, I decided to move here. I found an apartment right away. It just felt so right. So I moved here, and I never want to leave. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, theater, theater here in this community is really kicking. I like it a lot. I think it's uh, we got we have about seven or eight nonprofit organizations that do quality theater. Um, my favorite is Le Petit because I'm most familiar 
and uh, I've worked with them, and I, I like it. Um, and plus, I started grad school, so I'm definitely not leaving for the next few semesters. And um, that's really, I, I, you know, I could talk a little bit about grad school. Yeah, and tell how us I'm, about that. I didn't, I didn't go to grad school right away because I didn't find a program that really appealed to me until uh, last year. I found the Arts Administration program at UNO, and it's one of probably 30 to 35 Arts Administration programs in the country. So they're not, there aren't a whole lot. It's the only one in the state, and it just so happened to be at home. So I started it, and I'm really glad that I did because I'm learning um, law for nonprofit organization, I'm learning production, I'm learning grant writing, I'll learn marketing, and all the nitty gritty things that you need to not only be a successful performer, but I kind of want to take it to the next level, and I want to be on stage sometimes, but I also want to be useful in the house, or writing grants, or getting funding for what I love to keep existing. So, and it, it does take, it takes efforts on all, all ends. Very cool. Do you, does anybody have any questions? If you do, Say your question first and I'll repeat it so that we get it recorded. Okay. okay. Where did you live when you were in New York Eastern? Was it Bay Stormy or did you have to find it? You have the option. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll ask it first. Oh. <laughs> where, okay, where Patty did girl. you live in New York when you, you do, did spring break? <laughs> you have the option of either finding an apartment, doing the hotel thing, or doing what most of the spring board kids do, and that is staying at the Y. We stayed at the YMCA. We had a whole like hallway of I've done that dorms, too. and it was um, it was the Y. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was. I, I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't do it differently. It was about 800 bucks for the whole two weeks, so you can't beat that. Um, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. It was an experience worth having. Uh, some some of the springboard kids. I said this to the, the last class on Wednesday, and it seemed like people's eyes lit up. You can go to Springboard and never leave New York. You can get your parents to ship your stuff up to you. You can find an apartment. You can find a job. You can do it. You might even meet somebody that's going to be your roommate. And you have that camaraderie already. They're not a complete stranger. So this is a great way to get you up there. You can just call home and be like, I'm not coming home. Send me some sweaters. <laughs> you really can't. I, I know two, two people that did that while they were up there. And I have my heart set on getting at least one Loyola student up in that program. Do it in the next go. year or two. So I hope that it's one of you all. Next so question. What's your long-term goal for theater? All right, what's your long-term goal for theater? Well, that's a good question. Uh, that's a question I ask myself all the time. Um, I would like to have a studio one day. But now that I'm learning the ropes of nonprofit, I'm in love with it. And I don't think that there are a lot of um, well-run nonprofits that last for years and years and years. So. As of right now, I would like to put my efforts toward elongating some of some of the nonprofits that are kind of struggling, um, and, and maybe helping them write grants or like free, you know just kind of like freelancing and, and trying to uh, get some funding back into our organizations because um, nonprofits can can lose sight of their mission and and fail. And I just kind of learning that I'm passionate about keeping it alive. So. Maybe the studio will wait, and, and, uh, and I'll keep on with that. Very cool. Next. Would your nonprofit organization be focused on just one theater, or would it be an organization that focuses on bringing the organization to multiple venues? All right, I'm going to try to repeat that. OK, would, <laughs> <laughs> would your nonprofit organization be one be theater, specific to one, specific theater. to one theater, or would it be an organization that focuses on Theater in general. Um, I'm not sure you can do a nonprofit organization that focuses on multiple theaters because, I mean, maybe you could. Um, Depending on the service. It, yeah, I think I think now that like I just started grad school, so I'm just beginning to dabble in in these things. I feel like by the end, of, maybe by April 2012, I'll have a very good idea of where I'll put my efforts. Um, Broadway South uh, theater tends, it could be not, not profit or for profit. The company I work for right now is for profit. Um, we work for a management company in New York and we're doing Soul Doctor as a for profit show. Um, but I want to maybe utilize Broadway South for nonprofit theaters and get those tax breaks for nonprofit theaters and 
maybe bring that together. So maybe maybe going through the legislation and calling it something unified could benefit more than one nonprofit at a time. How important do you say a dance background is in musical theater? How important is a dance background in musical theater? Very important if you want to be in the chorus. You need to move well if you're a lead role. You just need to be able to um, it just depends on the show, really. Some musicals are very dance oriented, and if you're a dancer, you go to those auditions, and if you're not, try to, you know, I mean, it depends on who's directing it, and who, you know, just all those things. It's just kind of, the more you have in your back pocket, the better off you're gonna be, um, and the more you know yourself, the better off you're gonna be, like. You need to be able to move. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you need to be able to move. Um, actually knowing tap and specific things is great and will benefit you greatly. But it all, just like I said, it depends on the show. Mm -hmm. Leads don't necessarily do a lot of dancing, but there they, are shows where they Sometimes. Do. I did a you ton know? of dancing in Wedding Singer and, yeah, I mean, and in, you know, it's... It all depends. just does depend. But it, let's say I was in Les Mis, I didn't dance at all. You just, you have to sing. So it's... <coughs> It's uh, it just depends on the show. That's yeah. that's like any um, opportunity though. Know what you're applying for. Know mm -hmm. what you're getting yourself into, and whether or not you're qualified before. Right. And if if it's a situation where the the type of things you're attracted to keep requiring a particular skill, use this time to develop that skill. Um, right. Like, do you know the show In the Heights? Do you are familiar? Like, I'm not gonna go audition for In the Heights. Like, I'm not. That's just they're not gonna mm -hmm. cast me. Like that, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste their time or my time. But there's other shows that, you know, I'm not the best tapper in the whole world, but I'm dying to do Thoroughly Modern Millie, and I would go to an audition <laughs> for that and see if they would take my ability to do a time step and nothing else. <laughs> you know? It's possible. Mm -hmm. Next question. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel minorities are, uh, minority opportunities how do you feel minority opportunities are working in the theater business at the moment? Um, being that I'm not uh, technically a minority, um, that's a hard question for me to answer. I know that I meet, constantly meet every race, creed, color, religion, gender, preference, all the time. <laughs> you know, it's like, you just, uh, the theater is probably one of the most beautiful, colorful places, you know? like I. I you can really, a great thing about it is some of, some of these shows, like, do you like working on stage or off? Or both? On. Either? On. on? On. She's on stage. <laughs> so, so some of these shows, like, you could, you could play a number of ethnicities. You could pass for eight different ethnicities. So, I mean, you know, really, like, on stage, you really could. So I say you have more of an advantage than blonde hair, blue-eyed me, because I can only do American Girl. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> so, you know, so I think, it's, I think it's very, you know, it just depends on, on who you are and how you can portray yourself. So, like, if you wanted to go to an audition for The Color Purple, you could go. I couldn't. But you could also go to South Pacific or, you know, I could go to that too. That kind of thing. So it just depends on the show. Knowing how to market yourself appropriately yeah. for the opportunity. Yeah. Same thing with internships. Oh. All right. Go ahead. This is a little off subject, but the Disney audition. Mm -hmm. What did that involve, and where did you go for that? What What did the Disney audition involve, and where did you go for that? Went to Orlando. I got in line at about seven. I was uh, in the first dance group of, I think there were 800 people there. It was a long line, but we got up really early. We got up at like 5.30 from our little hotel and we drove over there and we were like first group, first 25 or 50, I can't remember. And that was the best way to go, just get it over with, because it was a holiday show audition, plus if, they didn't, if you didn't get a call back or you didn't stay for the holiday dance show thingy, you got shifted over into character auditions. And that's what my friend Matt that I went to Springboard with Terry Weibel, who is a model here, she's on the cover of New Orleans Wedding Magazine, and she's so gorgeous. She, she's a great dancer, too. She and I and Matt went to Orlando together as a little group. We took a road trip. Matt stayed all day in that dance audition. And me and Terry went over to character auditions. They make you do some crazy stuff, like <laughs> picture the biggest lollipop you can in the world and lick it. It's like, okay. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and and we, she got a contract that day for Sleeping Beauty, and I got put in the waiting pool for whatever, Alice in Wonderland or something, I don't know. And I was supposed to call every Monday, and then if you're, Matt got callback after callback after callback, but never, they didn't cast him. But they're both incredible people, and Terry lives here now. Like, all my friends from Lafayette live here now, and we all love it. Beautiful. Um, can you talk a little bit about the cost of the program mm -hmm. of Springboard? I remember my parents gave me the why for a graduation present, and that was like an $800, maybe $850 stay for the two weeks. I paid for my plane ticket, and I want to say the tuition, I might have gotten a little scholarship mm -hmm. that took like $200 off of the tuition of Springboard, and I think it was maybe around a thousand dollars. So that was about 800 as well and I just used some of my graduation money and money that I had saved to just go. And the reason why I bring that up is because some of you are freshmen and sophomores and it might not be the time yet for you to begin applying but now is the time to begin saving. Mm -hmm. I think you had mentioned before that the total cost was somewhere around fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Which is an incredible value for that type of experience yeah. but it's still a chunk of change that it you is. don't just come across you know. Right really quickly. Right. So um, for those of you that are a little younger, you might want to consider just saving up, you know, putting away a little bit of money every month, you know, for your dream fund or for mm -hmm. your, you know. And it doesn't have to be for Springboard necessarily. You right. need to, like, start researching what you're interested in. There's plenty of regional theaters all across the country that hire summer interns or that you could, let's say you, you have an aunt in Virginia and they have a really cool regional theater, you could stay with your aunt for the summer and volunteer at that regional theater and meet people that can point you in another direction or you might fall in love with it and stay there. You just need to like see what you're interested in, use your resources um, to make it most beneficial to yourself. Everybody is, you know, a different person and has a different setup. Main thing, get off campus. Get yeah. out of Loyola. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I'm here for is really to help you get out of here. <laughs> um, or to help you, you know, maximize your time while you're here to have other experiences besides just your classes. And, you know, Loyola offers some wonderful things on campus, but New Orleans offers many additional wonderful things. And so what can we take advantage of here in this city? And then beyond that, what can you take advantage of during your summers in other places? Um, Two things just popped in my head. Go ahead. Um, there's there's uh, Straw Hat auditions and Erda. Do y'all Have y'all talked about those? Um, if y'all Google Straw Hat and Erda, you can find dates. Erda auditions are for professional theaters and grad schools. You can hit it all at once. And it's usually like they'll come to Oklahoma, they'll go to the East Coast, they'll go to the West Coast, and they'll be in New York. So you can kind of go to that where it's m most convenient for you. Um, Straw Hat auditions are only in New York, and it's a huge casting call for non-equity members. Um, so if you don't have your equity card and you want to go audition, Straw Hat's the way to go. And talk a little bit about earning your equity card. Does everybody here know all about that? Are y'all all about union? Um, somebody, maybe somebody has a question. Okay. Um, it, does anyone have a question about that, or you want me to just kind of ramble about it? Ramble. ramble. Okay. <laughs> so uh, AEA is Actors Equity Association. There's different branches of unions that were formed for television, uh, film. What's the television one? AFTRA and SAG, that AEA is the equivalent for live performers. Um, to get your equity card, you can get cast in an equity show and work in it for 50 weeks and, and get it within that one show. Or you can get cast in an equity show that doesn't run 50 weeks, because not many around here do, um, and earn your points as you go. It, you can hop from show to show and earn your points. Let's say you go to a regional theater for the summer, you're going to get your card if you want it. If you, um, I think the EMT candidacy program is the way to go because you have five years to decide whether you want to join or not. And I think for young actors, community theater is really important and non-equity theaters are really important. Um, so once you have your equity card, you can't perform in those venues anymore. You have to be in equity shows only. And if you're not, you're breaking equity rules and you have to get special permission, just like, it's a rigmarole. And if you do a community theater show and you're an equity person, exactly. there will be an equity person that will call and rat your ass out. Mm -hmm. They do it in every, every city I've lived in. There mm -hmm. are people who, that's just their job. Yeah. 
they, they just like it. Down and, yeah, they're evil. You can't, I mean, you can get like special permission and do it, but it's like, why do you want to put yourself through that? The cabaret contract is all kind of different. Right, right. I mean, it's not like community theater is dead to you if you have your equity card, but it's just, I don't think it's the smartest move to get your equity card right away. On the, on the flip side, if you are moving to New York, you won't be seen unless you have your equity card. A cool way to earn equity points is, um, I, these are my two, um, what I would have done had I not moved here and fallen in love with the city, is a cruise line, a show and a cruise line. Um, some of them are equity, some aren't. So you can take your pick with that. Or um, touring. You can go to New York for a weekend. I know many people that have flown up there on a Thursday or Friday, flown back on a Sunday, and went to, they have, they have like cattle calls for these tour, uh, touring shows. And they get cast as little man number seven over in the corner of the chorus, and they're, and they're, they're on tour um, by going for that one weekend to New York. You could do that while you're at Springboard. There, I saw shows on my downtime, but there are auditions that you can go to on your downtime if you're like looking to get a job. You can mm -hmm. get a job. You have to work for it. You have to do your homework. You have to find out where these auditions are, how to get there, track your subway. Like, crazy to me. I'm just like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> but you can. It, it's doable. So it's just like, if there's that little fire in your heart that says, I want to be on Broadway, go. Work towards the equity. Work, toward, work toward the equity. Um, Question? Yeah. Mm. What's been your favorite role so far? Hope Cladwell and You're in Town. You're in Town? My faves is. Um, it's coming, It's going to be at NOCA like, next weekend, I think. So if you've never seen You're in Town, it's a blast. It this guy. We, we like the same shows, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah. next. Um, would you suggest having an agent or being your own agent? Would you suggest having an agent or being your own agent? If you're in New York? Yeah. In, general. Just, in general, a lot of this stuff depends on where you are. Where you are. It's completely different if you're going to stay here or go to New York. Right. I, you know? I'm here. I don't have an agent. I just go to auditions. Mm -hmm. If I was in New York, I would need to be part of an agency. Here's the thing that I've heard. And this is all, this is all just opinions, and I don't have experience with agencies, but um, a lot of people think i got to get in with the best agent in town, the, the best known agent in town. Chances are he's got five more of you in his file. He's maybe more familiar with them, and you know you're you're the new girl coming in. I would suggest signing a year contract with somebody who's going to work their butt off for you because they don't have anyone else like you, and they want to put you in a show so they can make some money. And then once your year contract is up, let's say you've got a couple credits under your belt, then go to the big dog. Good advice. Now if you're going to do <coughs> film, that's, that's a completely other thing. <coughs> Even here, you, you need to have an you agent. Need I kind of you know? I kind of have an agent, but I don't really. Yeah, I don't really do anything with him. Yeah, same like, here. He yeah. called me twice. Like, he's a family friend. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you don't count, Judd. Right. <laughs> Any other questions? Anyone else? Uh, like, oh, yes. What is your next show? What is your next show? I don't know. Being in grad school, it's, it's going to be difficult to get back on stage because I have to take night classes as a grad student. Um, Crossing my fingers that I'll be able to do Drowsy Chaperone in the spring. <gasps> oh, <laughs> Lloyd! Me and Lloyd. <laughs> yeah, um, it's in the Le Petit season. AJ Legra's directing it. Um, <clears throat> I heard auditions are not going to be until 2011. Are we in 2010? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm like, what year is it? Yeah. I don't know. Um, one, one little you know, bit of advice I wanted to give you all is you have Thanksgiving break coming up. You have Christmas you know, winter break coming up. After that, you have Mardi Gras time off after Mardi Gras, so you can still enjoy Mardi Gras. And then you have spring break as well. Those are all really, really great times where if you're going to go home or, you know, even if you just want to take a quick trip, use those times to do in informational interviews with people. Go places where you might be interested in. Um, and just use those times to network and find out about what other opportunities you may be interested in. Yeah. Especially this fall and uh, winter break are great times to consider what you want to do it next summer. Yeah, Google is my best friend. I always Google everything to um, just find out who's doing what and where it is, and <clears throat> you can't Google enough. And um, I wanted to say something about what you were just saying. Um, Breaks. Yeah, chances are somebody knows somebody who can help you. So <clears throat> we were talking about on Wednesday, 
like I want to help you and Georgia wants to help you and Patrick wants to help you. So if you're, if you know, man, Chicago really sounds like a great place. Um, I wish I knew somebody in Chicago. Chances are one of us knows somebody in Chicago that you could have coffee with mm -hmm. if you go visit there. And like my friend Josh Cheeps is in uh, Second City right now and he's amazing and I'm sure he would, you know, <laughs> say hello to you at least on Facebook. He would, you know, like, you know, email you or something and, and, and perhaps show you, I don't know, I don't want to volunteer Josh for anything, but I'm just saying, uh, chances are somebody knows somebody that could help you. Well, so utilize your contacts. And people are flattered when you think they're an expert. So if you say, you know, pose it as, you know, hi, I'm so-and-so, I'm just starting out, I'm really interested in learning, and I've heard that you have a wealth of experience and information. Um, may I take you to coffee and pick your brain, or may I schedule a phone call with you? If you can't be in the same city, you know, say, can I schedule a phone call with you and just kind of hear your story and learn from you? People are flattered by that, and they mm -hmm. want to help you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, get over that, you know, fear of, you know, cold calls and pick up the phone and write the email. It's how you run a business and you're your business. You just you have to expose yourself and you have to learn. You have to want to learn. And that's what I'm here for is to help you, you know, if, you, if you're going to write an email to someone, I can look over your emails before you click the send button. Of course, I can help you with resumes and cover letters. Where were you Strategy. for me? I yeah. wish I had you uh, <laughs> two years ago. That's incredible. <laughs> Utilize that. That's, a, that's an incredible thing that You'll get out of college and go, where's my Georgia? I had a secretary in, in, <laughs> right. in college. What is that like? That's really yeah. cool. Um, and you can write down my email if you want to contact me for anything. I'll, I'll go ahead and give you that. Um, it's Allison, A-L-L. -L. Is everybody ready? I'll wait. <clears throat> Okay. We're done? Is no, no, we're not. Oh, he oh. okay. Oh, he's he's going to not put the... Oh. oh, okay. We'll do that afterwards. <coughs> Real quickly, do you want to show the website? Yeah. Before we're yeah, I know some of you have clicked through it because you told Patrick that you thought it was informative, I think. Um, if you just click right here on this link, link, or the one below it. I don't know much about the theater intern group, but that sounds really cool too. So whatever you're into. It's americantheaterwing.org mm -hmm. is the company website. This is, okay, so it's, it's June 7th through 18th. So you seniors, y'all could go to this. I think videos are either due in January or March. I can't remember. It was in February. I remember January or March. There's still time. There's still time. So make your videos, send them in. And there's equipment here on campus um, you know, there, there are ways to do this here. It has to be the summer after your senior year. You can't do it after that. No. No. Yeah, you have to go right after graduation. Um, let's go to... Because it's literally to take you from college to the next level. Otherwise, they would be, they would have a complete overflow of people who are yeah. saying, I wish I'd done it when I had the time. So now's the time. <clears throat> I want to see if there's a deadline on here. Hmm. Well, everybody can go through. Yeah. Or I'm maybe the program application. Where is it? Right there. Apply? Pro program. In the square. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Program tuition is 1800 but you can get scholarships. There's scholarships on here, information about that. And I definitely got a scholarship because it didn't cost me that much. I'm not sure about that. We can look into it though. Okay, yeah. But I think you need to send your video in before that. You just right, right. just navigate through the website and um, write down yeah. the dates that you need to get everything in. And apply for your scholarships because that I mean that saved me. That's the only way I could have gone. Mm -hmm. I was a, I was a server in college. I don't know how many of you are servers, but I had an envelope system. I never put any money in the bank, so I'd come home with a bunch of cash, and I would have like eight envelopes and. It was like cable, rent, car, um, clothes, springboard. <laughs> like, I mean, it was, it was there. So I would just put like 20 bucks in there when I got home if I could. And it, it worked. 
But don't let the money scare you. I mean, don't mm -mm. go, oh my God, it's eight hundred dollars. I can't do it. I mean, if you want to do it, you know, you talk to George. It. I mean, there are ways that it can happen. Mm -hmm. We can research grants. Okay. We can, you know, look into different opportunities. But one point that Patrick made in uh, the last class that we did, which I think is a really important point, and not to be, you know, preachy or fussy. But people find money to spend on the things that they want, and then there's always the, the excuse that I don't have any money for things that, you know, it may be even something that they want, but it's delayed gratification. So, you know, think about, you know, if you're going to go out to eat or you're going to, you know, other things that you may spend money on, you know, cigarettes, whatever else that may yeah, be. We talked about <laughs> cigarettes. You know, the I had a student the other day who I have a $6 book for one of my classes, and she goes, I can't afford the book. <laughs> oh my. That pack of cigarettes costs more than the script. You know, and we all find, we find money for what we want to find money for, and we find time for what we want to find time for. And this thing is, even though it's got lots of perks with the shows and the Tony Awards, and it's, it's an delayed, educational right. thing that is worth, worth it. It's, it's invaluable. It's, it's life changing. I went, I, two years ago, I did the same type of program in New York, but for old people. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Wait, sign me up. Yeah, <laughs> I want to go now. <laughs> you know, and with all the same people, and it, and it was, it changed my life. It was amazing. And what I learned was, you know, it was so incredible. Even though I did have to pay a little bit, it was worth every penny. Mm -hmm. And you more. Know, I mean, if because this is what you want to do, you know, the educate you, you, you never stop learning. You know, you never know it all. Okay, um, I'm still. I learn every day. I learn with every class. Right. Um, it's just. It's worth it. It's so worth it. If this is what you want to do. And the contacts, just the connections you make. And I mean, how great it was for when you went and you realized this is not where I want to be. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Like that's I it. Yeah. I didn't have yeah. to move to New York to <laughs> figure out. Yeah, I went to the seminary. Okay, that's not for me. But now I know. Good to know. You know that New York City is not for you. That's a very you know? valuable experience. And that really, yeah. that's why, you know, with uh, with your summer breaks, I really encourage you all to, to do internships and things like that. And just try your hand at something. If you find out you hate it, that is really important <clears throat> information. Because the worst thing to do would have been to have, you know, signed a year-long lease, moved up to New York, and then had to pay rent on this place and been miserable. And, and had four jobs. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, and realized that that was not what you wanted. So these short-term right. things are really great opportunities. I think so. And this is just one of, of, you know, lots of others that we know about. Right, this isn't the only thing out there, but you're in good hands if you go here. I can vouch for that because mm -hmm. I went. Yeah, and you never know what can happen. <clears throat> you never, like, I'll tell you, when I was living in New York and I decided I was going to move to New Orleans, I googled live theaters in New Orleans, and everything came up. So I sent my resume and my headshot to every live theater in New Orleans. One of them at the time I didn't realize, but I saw Rick's Cabaret. And I thought, oh, they must have oh opened up. A, they must have opened up a cabaret in New Orleans. So I sent them my headshot and resume. Never heard anything from it. I'm walking down Bourbon Street after I moved here. I'm like, oh. That's <laughs> why. For those of you who don't know, Rick's Cabaret is a titty bar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they didn't want me. <laughs> but, but one of the places I sent it to was the Sanger Theater, which you all, it's been closed since Katrina, but you all know or remember at least. I was, wanted to move back here. They called me. They held a position for me. I flew down here, uh, interviewed with them, and I was running the Sanger. You know, I mean, it, and just because I, I just started. It's incredible. My name out. And my first audition here, when I was little, um, I went to a show, I went to South Pacific, and the woman, Ann Casey, was playing Nellie Forbush, and I fell in love with her. And this was when I was little. And um, she was uh, Lily St. Regis on Broadway and Annie, and she's a wonderful actress. I come here from, and I moved back here, and I got to my first audition, and I auditioned for Blood Brothers. And all of a sudden, Ann Casey's there. And I never forgot her name. I even carried the program around since I was little. <laughs> and, the Aunt Casey's audition, I'm like, oh, Aunt Casey's audition. You know, to me, that was like such a big deal. Well, she got cast, and we both got cast as the leads. Oh my God, I'm <laughs> on stage with Aunt Casey. Oh no, my no. God. <laughs> we became best friends, became best friends. But we did that show. Liberty was opening up the Mystery of Edwin Drood. A week before it opened, one of their leads had to leave. Anne was in the show. She told, this was a Sonny and Derek day, she told Sonny, the director, call this guy. He called me. I came in a week before the show. I did the run, and I've stayed there for. Th I did every show for three years at Le Petit. You know, it, you just don't know. 
that's you know, it, you so just true. don't know. And you don't know who you're talking to in a bar. You don't know who you talk, you don't, you don't know who knows who. Right. So treat really? everybody with respect. And, and like, yeah. like George said, we, I mean, I, those of you that want to go to graduate school, I know people in almost every school. I, you know, and I have friends in New York on, on almost every Broadway tour. I have a friend that just won the Tony last year. I mean, you know, you know people, you know people, you know, you don't know who, who can help you. Okay? I didn't give my, my be nice speech mm -hmm. like I did on Wednesday. Okay. Well, you don't, you don't really get cast just based on what you can do on stage. You get cast by how awesome you are to work with. So if you walk in the doors every day with a positive attitude, you don't complain about your costume, not fitting you the way that you want, and you don't complain that, you know, the, the shoes they gave you are ripped or whatever. I'm like, you tell someone, but you're not like, these shoes are ripped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need to fix that. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody wants to work with that. They want to work with someone. No, no. They, they will put your shoes you. underneath a pile of stuff to do. Mm -hmm. But if you walk up and you say, my shoes are ripped. I don't think I can perform like that. I'm so sorry, but can you fix them? The costumer's like, yeah, right away, whatever. Like, that, and the costumer might be best friends with the director or might go for drinks with the director that night and say, so-and-so was really nice or so-and-so was, is hell to work with. Don't hire her again. You know, that kind of thing. And that happens all the time. It happened just that. What, at the show opening tonight in the city and a professional actor in that show has just been extremely difficult to work with. And I was talking to the director yesterday and he was like, no more. You know, and this is someone who's very, very well respected and works a lot. But we were talking, I've said this many times too, like in, if you're in my directing class, you know, it, I would much rather work with you with someone who's not quite as talented but is a joy to work with than work with someone that's amazing but is a freaking diva bitch. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. It's, you know, and, it's so, and I know a lot of people that get work not because they're talented but because they're a joy to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they're talented too, but they're not the most amazing thing you've ever seen on mm -hmm. stage. Very important point. Yes. And even for those of you that you see yourself having a professional career on stage, um, standard business professional etiquette still counts. Writing thank you notes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sending follow-ups, you know, ha having professional, you know, well-written, composed emails, not, you know, just scatterbrain. Having a pro professional Facebook profile. Um, we don't need to get too into that. I know y'all get preached out about that a lot, but you know, keeping those respectable so that just in case that really awesome director or person, you know, that you met last night friends you on Facebook, that you're you can go on and accept it or having your privacy settings pretty under control because privacy settings are cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. because the last thing you want is for that director who maybe wants to cast you to see you, you know, act in a fool and all, all <laughs> like a drunken mess in your photos, right? I just because think it's funny that you said act in a fool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Not act in a fool. No. Acting a fool. Acting a fool. Acting a fool. <laughs> yeah, acting a fool. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you go girl. <laughs> <laughs> because because then they're gonna think that's how they're gonna show up to rehearsals. You know, and, and you know it might be acceptable in a social setting, but you know, you want people's impression of you to be that you're reliable. Yeah. You can control yourself. So, yeah. those those types of things do convey messages, even if it's you know, even if they misinterpret it the wrong way. You just don't want anything that's open for to be misinterpreted. Question? I'm kind of scared to say this, but I feel like a lot of times around here, theater is very political. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not that's theater. Yeah. yeah, I know it is everywhere, but I feel like a lot of I guess I've just fucking been around here, and I feel like well, all you know um, is theater. So what? What do you have to say? I don't really know what my question Actually, is. Actually, I have a story about well, that. I'll ask the question real quick. Sure. Um, she said she feels that theater is very political. How do you deal with that? Um, when I moved here, I didn't know a soul, especially in theater. Um, and I volunteered to usher a show. It was called Puna, the F dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I, it was at Le Petit. It was in Muriel's Cabaret. And I sent through Facebook, my phone number, but my phone number is, it has a lot of threes, and a lot of people get it wrong, or I get all these like, you, you know, are you selling this lawnmower in the quick quarter? No, like, <laughs> and people get my number wrong all the time. So, I went to the show, but I didn't usher the show, because I never got the phone call saying to usher the show. 
and I got fussed at in the lobby after the performance by Alex Pomez. I don't know if anyone knows him, but he was like, "You were supposed to usher this show, and you didn't. You didn't answer. You didn't return my call." And I was like, "You didn't call me," and he was like, "Yeah, I did." And he was so rude. <laughs> But that's his nature. And so, and meanwhile, I made a friend with AJ Allegra, who um, is just like a fellow colleague now, and he's wonderful. And we, we were talking, and anyway, I got a phone call from Alex the next day saying, I'm so sorry, I misread your number. I typed it wrong on my phone. And I was like, yep, you didn't call me. <laughs> so so I'm like, he's like, can I take you to coffee and make it up to you? And I'm like, well, I'm actually going home for the holidays, but maybe when I get back. So we kept in touch. And I became friends with him and AJ, and I credit AJ to telling Blake Kohili that I was good to work with, and Blake Kohili cast me in the World War II Museum. Thus, I my career has taken off since the World War II Museum. So, who is the caster for the World War II Museum? Who is the uh, for the World War II Museum? Blake Kohili directed the World War II Museum show, the 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 launch of it. And now, about a year ago, Victoria is Reed is yeah, a year mm -hmm. a year ago, um, last fall, we had the big opening, and Victoria Reed now is she's the entertainment coordinator at the museum, but she's also in charge of the shows. So just make friends. Yeah, I mean it is po theater's political yeah. everywhere, but you, it's not it's not like it's impossible to get in. I did go to three auditions and. and Nothing ever came of it mm -hmm. until I made friends. So something you mentioned no the last time was about the you know clicks within theater mm -hmm. and how it's not it's not intentional. It's not, but how do you break in? Yeah, it's not clicky to be clicky. It's not like high school clicks. It just kind of happens because these people work together all the time and they trust each other and they formed a community. And to get into that is a little bit tricky. But my biggest uh, tip would be to volunteer to usher and and to get in there and make friends with the other ushers and go back, usher for more shows and that's the best way to get in and talk to people. You see they'll see your face over and over again and most of the people that are ushering are also auditioning or directing. They're it's a small little community. It's not just about the audition. No. You know not at all. They want to see a familiar you, face. That's not what got you in. No. I mean it did. Yeah, but, well sort but, of but right but no. it's yeah it's not about the audition. Mm -hmm. It's it's networking, it's Kissing ass, it's making friends, it's playing the game. It, I was lucky because I came in when the NOLA project came in. So these guys were, they were all from NYU. They were creating their own non nonprofit. It's called the NOLA project. And AJ and Alex were head of that. And uh, they were making it happen here. And they were just getting the ball rolling with the NOLA project. So they were interested in meeting anybody in the city because they were new to the city too. Well, Alex was, he was already from here, but AJ and all the, uh, Andrew Larimer and um, from here, but, but he was an NYU kid. Yeah. So and Kristen Wittershine mm -hmm. and all those people. Um, I just kind of I got lucky, you know. But I mean, there's the quote that um, what is it? Luck is where preparation meets opportunity. Absolutely. So just yeah. be prepared. I would because there, you know, everybody has doors open. It should be written on every wall. <laughs> <laughs> just as a reminder. Right. So be prepared. You mm -hmm. know, be. You know, even if you're not feeling in a great mood, be polite to everyone. Yeah, like um, mm -hmm. like outside of theater, uh, I was in class. I'm in class with this girl who works for New Orleans Ballet Association, and she and I walked to the vending machine together one day, and we struck up a conversation. And um, I was just really sweet to her, and she was nice to me back. And when you know, I got asked to go to an interview at New Orleans Ballet Association for an internship that starts very soon, and she works there, so. She put in a good word for me. I don't know if I got the internship or not yet. My interview was two days ago, but at least you know you it can't didn't, hurt. At least you know you didn't blow I wasn't that at, opportunity. Yeah, because I walked <laughs> to the vending machine with her and struck up a conversation, so that did me some good later on, like months later. It's a small you city, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want one more? Okay. I have a question about auditions. Yeah. Um, when you're auditioning, is there any like for, for professional auditions? Is there any specific way you should dress or, or fix yourself up? Any specific way you present yourself? When you're auditioning, is there any specific way you should dress or fix your hair or makeup or just present yourself? You're always going to hear what's right and what's wrong. But what you have to understand is that that's those people's opinions about what's right and what's wrong. So someone else is going to think opposite of what you were just told. So um, what I usually do is I do what works for me. I know that 
I, I like waist belts because they give me a longer look. I'm a short person. So I wear I tend to wear dresses and waist belts to auditions just because they are flattering. And you know, the next person over might be wearing jeans and that might be okay for that person. That might be what they're comfortable auditioning in. I would never wear jeans to an audition. I also wouldn't wear a turtleneck to auditions even though they're my favorite thing to wear because it, you're floating head in a turtleneck. So those are the things that I've picked up like through my experience in, in auditioning and, and getting tips and I only listen to the tips that make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I don't try to incorporate a tip in my life that just I'm like, that's not, that's you. not a cool right. tip. You know, so just people are going to tell you, especially with headshots, people are so opinionated about headshots. Do what you like, do what represents you well, you know, do what features your personality. Um, Seth Rudetsky's big tip was they want to work with someone happy. Like, don't come in and sing a sad song to me, okay? Like, I just want to work with someone happy. And like, even if, it's a, even if it's a ballad, just don't be sad. And so, I mean, you can never go wrong with that because people do want to work with someone joyful. And if you wear black, if you wear jeans, you look sad, depressed, and unprofessional. So I would say stay away from turtlenecks, blacks, and jeans. You look presentable, That's right? Good. It's, it's a, it is, How do you want to market yourself? Yeah. You're your business. Would you paint your building aqua blue? Probably not if you want people to take you seriously, like that kind of thing. Yeah, and it all depends on the show, you know. Unless you're a pediatrician's office, then you might want to go aqua blue. Like, mm -hmm. what are you today? What right. kind of show are you going to? Mm -hmm. Right. I What's mean, I've seen people. Don't Susan, be stupid. It, That's yeah. all, but bottom line, don't be stupid. <laughs> just be smart, okay? Yeah. Just grow a brain. No, but like Seussical the Musical, you could wear your wackiest, tabackiest stuff. You could wear striped leggings and a flappy sweatshirt, and it would be, you'd probably get cast. But don't wear that to the color purple. <laughs> you know? Like, just use your head. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yep. Very good advice. Cool. Good. Well, thank you, Allison. Any other yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you all. Thank you. We'll turn it. I'll turn it off.